By the early 80s, the South Yorkshire Passenger Transport Executive was getting into its stride. Fares were low, passenger numbers were high, and a whole host of new buses were on order as the PTE approached its 10th anniversary. Older types, such as the early examples of the fleet lines, were due for replacement, as was many of the PTE's various odds and ends. The vehicles bought in small numbers by the three previous corporation fleets of Doncaster, Rotherham and Sheffield, of which the PTE was formed. Looking through this fascinating collection of archive cinefilm, which has never been previously released, is leading SYPTE preservationist Gareth Atherton and the original filmmaker Stuart Cook. That's going up into Rock Street at Pittsmore on the, I think it was a 150 and 51 in those days. It's now the 47 and the 48. And that's a view looking across Sheffield from Pittsmore. The vehicle of which Gareth Atherton is most connected to is this, the Volvo Ailsa. The uh, Ailsa's on uh, Norfolk Park. The film here, as uh, a lot of the Ailsa's were filmed during the latter years, during the period where they were just about to be withdrawn. And uh, unfortunately, none of the preserved ones are actually on this film, which is a bit of a, a let down, but never mind. Very scenic. Uh, oh, I remember this very, very well. I'd walked up from Hillsborough to, uh, to film this on the 31 route at the top of Burt Walkley Lane and I was really amazed when a Swift turned up because I think there were only about two left at that time and it were normally a Leyland National route so just to drop on a, a Swift like that was very, very lucky indeed. That must be one of the most arduous hills in Sheffield and the Swift villages struggle up there. The ECW body fleet line, rather unusual styling. Uh, only repeated elsewhere in the country at Colchester, but that was on Atlantean. And this was the first batch of new buses that SYPT bought, because when they were delivered they got no fleet names or logos on. And that's going up Ripley Street at Hillsborough. The man articulated vehicles only lived in Sheffield for two years maximum, and then uh, got withdrawn and some are now in Australia, and I believe they are still actually running. I think three of them went to Australia. The man articulated bus is on a trial service to Wyburn. They couldn't use the Leylands because they, at this point I think they actually grounded them I think. So they were never used on this route, it's a trial list. But they did run on service. I think the mans were a lot more successful than the Leylands anyway. The opinion varies really of which is the best. The man ones were certainly the most sprightly vehicles. And the Leyland ones were perhaps the most practical because uh, they were uh, built with uh, Leyland National Parts. More about the South Yorkshire PTE's famous articulated buses later. It's on Penniston Road near Orland Stadium. They were delivered at the time by Dennis Dominator. Part well bodied fleet line. 52 rule before it went minibus. Later delivery of uh, part of oil bodies, this time on the Atlantean chassis. Cinema's gone, of course, yeah. A Metribus heads in Fitzalan Square and uh, East Lank body Atlantean. New to Sheffield Transport heads the other way. These again, were a bit of an unusual front of appearance, but a number did survive and uh, get its brought to Australia where they still are. Interestingly, one of the Alexander Bud Atlanteans that went over Sheffield Transport is in a museum in Australia. The Leyland uh, Dad articulated buses. You need to have them going around corners, bend your buses really to have <laughs> any kind of effect. Interestingly, only one of these vehicles has actually been scrapped. A number did survive as exhibition vehicles. It's a moor foot near the old SE co op. That were its terminus, uh, Moor Foot, back up the moor. I'm not sure if the moor was open at this time. I think it went round the back actually, as the buses do today of course. PD going round in the corner there. Part whale body. Don't know if that's the same bus or not. It's probably a fleet line. Benavolid Ailsa, 
looks fairly fresh out of the paint job that one. 3980 East Bank vehicle. That eventually ended up in uh, Edinburgh with Eastern Scottish. I thought they were fabulous. That's the interesting buses we, have, we had in Sheffield, I think. I used to work in the city centre in the department store and I could hear them screaming up and down. They were amazing. New delivered National 2, uh, diverted order. Delivered in all over Queen, then uh, eventually gained the SYPG Brown and Queen. We all said there weren't enough brown on these new livery, so they did one in more brown round the bottom, but it didn't look much better really, did it? <laughs> Brand new Dennis Dominator on the 82. 2102, which definitely is only the second one numerically. Leyland PD uh, recovery vehicle. Uh, the 82 now has now gone low floor uh, and it's now run by uh, either B7TL Deckers or uh, B7 Single Deckers. It's a bit dark. Part of our bodied Atlantean and a rather snow covered Sheffield. Part of the fascination with the Ailsas were their striking looks. Stuart Cook. I suppose, yeah, I mean, they were different. I mean, they look very, very modern, incredibly modern. Even today, they, they look okay. quite, they don't look out of place at all, would they? Just a glimpse of. Uh, the vintage buses that were kept at the uh, Canal Wharf. A uh, Leopard, which I'm going to have as a guess at an ex Dernways vehicle. It is. It's in blue and green with uh, just the PTE logo applied. I love that advert on a 1979-1980 uh, Metro bus. Commercial Street. Part low bodied Atlantic. It's changed somewhat where these cars are running now is tram track. We borrowed the Greater Manchester PT buses. The GMPG vehicle in the background is hired due to the vehicle shortage. Uh, the shape of van in the background, an interesting place to offload your passengers, that. Interesting colour for a uh, Morris Marina on the left there. And a Hillman Avenger there. Street 112 was the last of the type to run. Uh, and it also uh, nearly ended up being preserved, but it uh, sadly was not to be. And there's a missing link now in the uh, preserved Sheffield vehicles. Going around the uh, hole in the road, which has now got some which I'm going over the top of it. There's anybody fleet line there, followed by an Ailsa. Particularly dirty Ailsa, with the uh, splash going up from the wheel arches. The old Penniston Road. It's just called the old road now as well, that part. Dennis Dominator. They were the first batch of uh, vehicles delivered with single door layout. It's quite weird to walk on there because it's just so quiet. It has changed dramatically that, uh, that part of Sheffield. Hallerton Stadium. Arizona Red Atlantean, this time fitted with a uh, Voith three speed automatic gearbox. 1737, uh, uh, Royal Water Atlantean, specially painted in uh, Sheffield Transport livery. They did a Doncaster one, in a uh, Doncaster livery one on National, and a uh, Robin livery one on a uh, Royal Water Atlantean. That was 1640, I think. If I got a pound for every time somebody told me that our 874 Regent 5 was the best livery, I'd be a rich man now. This is probably the most filmed vehicle and the most photographed vehicle of the time. If it goes around Park Square, heading now down towards where the station is. It always used to run on the, was it the 851 to Redmires on a Sunday? 
because it always had to be conductor operated that because it had to reverse at the outer, t at the outer, you know, the Red Myers terminus. It went further on than Lodge Moor. Part well where the fleet line just passed the opposite direction. It's actually advertising the open day. I'm presuming it's going to be at uh, Wheel and Road Garage. When new buses are repainted into an old livery, it can be quite difficult to get it right. Yeah, somehow, like that B10 that was done, it, it didn't look quite right. But this does. It looks like it's always worn Sheffield livery. I think we said at the time we'd like an Ailsa done in it. There is one of this batch of vehicles preserved, which is 1756. And a really quite a large batch of vehicles. It's, uh, there's only one preserved. There's a couple more in existence, but these are now out the top. This one did go for further service, but has now been scrapped. A brief trip to Doncaster. Special anniversary livery for Dennis Dominator 2214, uh, Doncaster Tramway livery, celebrate 80 years of uh, transport in Doncaster. And back to Sheffield for a final journey. Fleet Line 112, as I mentioned earlier, it's now in its uh, Last day of service, it's got a, a special plaque commemorating the fact it's uh, operated for 17 years. That was to be surpassed greatly uh, by the Dead Dominator, the oldest one, still running uh, near the end. And it was indeed the last one to run, was 20, taking 25 years in service. At that time, it would have been uh, quite an achievement, 17 years from a, a, a bus, because the PT's policy was to get rid at 12 years. At 12 years old, some did go for further service, but the very majority of them did go for scrap 12 years. And as, uh, as time has progressed, you'd think at 12 years old, the vehicle was uh, got many, many, many more years of useful life in it, and they were selling them for scrap. It ran in service, but obviously a lot of enthusiasts rode on it. I used to grab it at lunchtime in my dinner hour. It was a Saturday, I think. And this is taken from Castle House, I think at tea time. I mean, nowadays, 20 years on a vehicle is nothing. And of course, they've recently done that with the uh, Dominators, with the placard, with the board on the front. I'm not sure that first were too happy about that, telling everybody that we are running 25-year-old buses, <laughs> but uh, I think they relented and, you know, I don't think they were too happy about it. These vehicles now, compared to what was running alongside them, they look quite dated. It's the uh, rather more modern looking Van Hool bodied Aelsas and the Alexander bodied Dominators. I think this was a sort of the nipper system of buses with little LHs. There's an experiment to run around housing estates where big buses couldn't otherwise go. PT introduced uh, the, nip the city nipper, or the nipper. Um, these were Bristol LH buses which uh, eventually then progressed to the delivery of a number of Dennis Dominoes later on. This was a petition, maybe in low fares, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, Easy W body fleet line there uses a publicity vehicle, number 810. Interestingly, one of those is now preserved, more of which later. If you weren't paying attention, you could be confused with the names of some of the new services. Yeah, at that time we got the City Clopper, which was a horse bus, the City Clipper and the City Nipper. <laughs> I forget what the ratio was, but there was some, some in red skirts and some in brown skirts, and I can't remember why. Slightly uh, different livery, on oh, another bit of RH, the red livery rather than the brown. Another one coming around the corner in the background with those lovely little buses. The bus that's just gone up with that deep brown skirt, there was only actually one done in that livery. At least the LHSs were proper buses. Yeah, they were, they weren't mini buses, they were just short length uh, buses. <laughs> Mount 2 Cortina, been overtaken by the uh, Bristol LH and the N2. That's the trouble with eager beavers, they were just awful little vehicles. <laughs> The number is 1051. These were uh, 
new to London. They had a national one with the uh, season's uh, decorations on the roof. This is obviously a Christmas uh, feature on a, a Leyland National. No, it's not, is it? It's not, that's not a Christmas job, is it? Or is it? It's a zoo thing. The trouble is, it wasn't Christmassy. Which is a bit strange. It was just animals. <laughs> so whether it was just what they could get their hands on, I don't know. I think some cities and towns still do it, but never done it in Sheffield again. Yeah, the vehicle is MTV 729M, which uh, came to PG from Nottingham. Amazing that that vehicle does still survive as a uh, film location vehicle. I'm glad we got the gallery to film it from it. <laughs> if you could get a little bit above it. As yes, you see, it's got the, the pod, which is the, uh, the heating system. When, they, when these heaters did work, they worked very, very well. I remember driving one of these uh, for the pod heating system and it was roasting. The uh, PTEs, we all missed the bus campaign and the Metrobus. One of the last batch of standard Metrobuses. One thing about the advert liveries in at this era was at least they left the windows clear and you could see through them. I, my impression was that if you put glass in buses it's meant to be seen through but looking at things like the 60 route and the 41 route you, start, you sit upstairs at the front and you, can't, you turn right and you can't see anything. It's unbelievable. He's like my Atlantean, he's going to be a fleet line going any other way, climbing the hill. I think that's on the Prince of Wales Road circular, but I am not sure. One of the points which dates a bus body design is the front of the roof. Gareth Hatherton. Alexander Body Fleet Line noticed the round dome styling on this batch. Which again looked very dated, really, because they've got a domed front roof. It's going up uh, Norfolk Park. The later batch of the next delivery of Alexander Bodies would have had the peak domes. And the Pins Wales Road Circular, number 257 does survive preservation. Alexander Body Fleet Line is to uh, single door layout. So the PTE's policy was to have it in dual door, and then they went to the single door with the dominators, but Sheffield Transport seemed to have uh, whatever they could get almost. There were a lot of trouble, I think, with people uh, getting trapped in the doors and the centre uh, doors, I think. I mean, they, they obviously, they were a lot quicker for loading and unloading, no doubt about that. I remember once getting off a bus at Hillsborough Baths and the kerb was slanting towards the bus and I actually slipped and I ended up with my legs underneath the bus. You just don't know whether the driver's seen that, so you panic immediately trying to get up. And there was, like, between the shelter as well. So I was, like, between the bus and the shelter on the floor with my legs under the bus. Jewel again on this row body Atlantean. This is an S registered uh, one. And uh, these were new with uh, G2 automatic transmission, which proved rather troublesome. So they got converted very early on to semi automatic. This is on the 42. Another boy Atlantean. The driver trainer PD3, it could possibly be 904. I think there were two actually, weren't there? So it, it could be one of the others. Well, if it's 904, it, uh, after its driver training duties, it was taken into the works and was rebuilt and uh, outshopped in uh, Chipper Transport livery. Still is, it still uh, is in preservation, along with the uh, similar 1156. Hey, Routemaster. No, we haven't just popped to London. Our in Sheffield was due to having an open day. Everybody seemed to get on board at that time where people would uh, bring vehicles up from uh, various parts of the country, some from Manchester, some from London. London inevitably had to be the route master. It's not late at night though, it's just a bloody awful day. <laughs> As you can see, no, it, was, it weren't. Uh... That Atlantean there, part of Atlantean is number 660 which was the last one to run. That did nearly get preserved, but again, it didn't quite happen because it had a defective chassis. The day was organised by the PTE's Public Relations Officer, Bruce Hugman. Now they're in Titan from Greater Manchester. A bit modern for me, that. 
to cane for the day. At least one of those survived, one of that batch, with the Cell Net Preservation Society. The Titan, although it sold in very large numbers in London, not many other people bought it. It was perhaps a little bit overcomplicated for, for its time. It's a vintage livery, isn't it? I think they put on it. They said to Bruce, if you'd told us, we could have actually made some blinds to show, you know, rather than they got makeshift blinds on, they could have put, they, they would have made proper blinds for Greenland Road, Pond Street bus station or whatever, you know. How he managed to get about half a dozen buses to come from London to Sheffield for day, I will never understand. It's just, I mean, it's, it's one hell of a journey, isn't it? Really. Tell me who Bruce was then. Bruce Hugman. He was a publicity and PR man for, would it be SYPT in them days, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, PR and publicity. And that was the last 33 foot Atlantean. This is a ride on a route master from Darnell, going up Prince of Wales Road. Yeah, they ran a shuttle service down from Pond Street up along the parkway down Prince of Wales Road and into Greenland Garage. Bruce Huggerman just got things done, you know, he clicked his fingers and things happened. He was just, he was just magic really. Amazing guy. Then a national to the left there. Going down uh, Pond Hill. Last time you saw two route masters parked in Pond Street. Parked on Pond Hill and to the left, what is now Pond's Forge. Been passed by Alexander Body's fleet line. The uh, Bristol RE of East Midland. Followed by a uh, Mark 1 single door metro bus with an 1800 batch. You can just imagine that you know, it took 20 years plus before the last route masters really officially ran in London. I don't think we'd have believed that when we'd seen this. <laughs> Somebody said they were going to go into the 21st century, they just said, no, no way. He just wished he'd took more of it. <laughs> Mark, the weather didn't help. It was appalling day. Pond's Ford, which is now on that site to the left. Crashed into by Alayla National, number 28, when it was uh, partly constructed. The National ended up uh, in the swimming pool. Going for a swim, the Greater Manchester PTE Titan. Not many people bought them, did they, really, outside of London? They were fairly rare, weren't they? We certainly had none in Sheffield. We, we thought it strange at the time that more modern buses after 10 years were, were being withdrawn, but the route masters were just soldiering on. That's uh, in the city bus station. All manner of uh, vehicles, Metrobus, Dominator, another Metrobus, 1890, given its identity. It's from uh, Greenland Road Depot, which um, has got its uh, open day. Interestingly, uh, Greenland Road Depot is now closed and is now a uh, B&Q superstore. It's perhaps a, uh, a sad reflection of the times we have now have uh, one large depot in Sheffield, but uh, at one time there was uh, probably half a dozen and there's now only one. It's a sad reflection of the time, really. Interestingly, B&Q on their anniversaries when it opened and also after a year of operation on the Greenland Road site, they do actually request from the Bush Museum uh, the vehicles to come back for the day, have a, just a little display. So I suspect they are quite proud of their uh, roots, as it were. Cinefilm and dull weather didn't go together very well actually. I mean with video it's, it, it is better, certainly. But it is so historical, isn't it, this? That I must have spent a small fortune one time. I could have bought a palace gun to it if I'd not done all this. This is a journey on a... I'm not sure what I'm riding on actually. It was on, on the parkway and this is at Darnell. I think I'd be on a route master actually. I don't know how many there were to be honest. I think there were at least three. I, think, I don't think I'd ride on something else, to be honest. <laughs> One of them was uh, the OM1000, 1000 VXL, which uh, is now in preservation, has been for many years. I think RM10 was here, actually. That, were a bit, that was a special one. I don't think anybody else has ever done You see, they did these handwritten ones. I wouldn't think there's ever been another open day like this. There's the City Clopper and the Rope Master together. <laughs> I mean, really, when you look at this, it's amazing, isn't it? And it was so well supported, considering the weather. In those days, uh, an open day was uh, 
something that everybody wanted to go and see. Whereas if you would have if you had an open day today, I think that it would never be anywhere near as well patronised. There's lots and lots of regulations we have to adhere to now, whereas then it was a much easier time, as it were. They're the two Olympians that went to Chesterfield, didn't they, eventually, I think. That's Hillsborough Corner. And then Mark II Metrobus, slightly different to the front styling. I think it was better, more pleasing to the eye. So the Bristol LH, LH rather dull uh, winter's day. The Yorkshire Bank on the corner of Wayne Gate there, which is still there. I think, weren't some called the City Nipper and some the Nipper? I think that was it, the red ones were City Nippers and the others were the brown were Nippers. And, and I can't remember. Oh, that's got a Christmas theme. Another rather more Christmassy treat, treatment of a Lowland National. Yeah. It's obvious, oh yeah, different year, definitely. I think that one is KCR 108P. National uh, lets the uh, Atlantean pull out. I'm up on the gallery here, aren't I? Which is, I mean, I won't normally film at this kind of time of day. It just about works, just about works, doesn't it? Yeah. I think they use this, uh, this Christmas decoration on this for a couple of years. What you had to do with Sydney was to take it at dusk and then it appeared, you know, nearly dark. I think considering the batch of buses that there were, I think there were, I probably took more Aylsas than anything else actually. Which probably says it all really, doesn't it? <laughs> I suppose Gareth enthuses when he sees this, does he? I mean, I know he's, I mean, he's like with these, as I am with Regents, and I think that's great, you know. The Aylsas, uh, the Green of Odd examples, lived down the 71 and the 69. The cream board at the top of the radiator grill is for the Vidomat self-service ticket machine display. These never actually had uh, those machines fitted. They were either conductor operated or like these are in the later days, uh, one man. If you get a close up shot of one, you will see a blue sticker at the uh, passenger side windscreen, which says it's uh, one man operation, way failure. I would imagine that bus on that shop will be giving all it's got. The drivers used to absolutely thrash these things around and uh, because they were rather lively, were known as flying Volvos. These flying Volvos had quite an interesting berth. Due to supply difficulties, the PT couldn't get the fleet line, so they went to Volvo, which was the first non-British product, if you like, to be uh, delivered to the PTE. Then even more controversially, Alexander couldn't meet the deadline, so they went to Van Ulm McArdle left Dublin, which led to a unique and very futuristically styled body. Very pleasant to ride on, very pleasant to drive, much more airy than the uh, equivalent Alexander body product. Though at the time, although for an enthusiast it's fabulous, lots of noise, but from a passenger's point of view perhaps a lot of them uh, wore earplugs because they really were quite noisy in operation. It was a superb spot, this, for filming. I mean, you got, you know... They did actually paint one in the newer red livery, didn't they? But it, it didn't last very long, did it? It, it kind of went before it arrived, nearly, didn't it? Yeah, you can see the uh, blue Wayfarer sticker on that one there. 379, that did the bounds after it left Sheffield. It uh, went down to Hampshire Bus, and then it went up to uh, Magic Bus at Glasgow. And it may have gone to one of the operators after that. Not sure, but it certainly is uh, scrapped now. Nothing is ever certain that uh, something has been scrapped, but it's a, a process of, of illumination, really. Yeah, you know, you've got photographs in existence of them with all the subsequent operators, and then nothing has been heard of a particular vehicle for many years. If it, even if it's not conclusive that it's been scrapped, it's best to assume it has because it's not been heard of. The only possible thing it could be sat in somebody's yard and far from part of the country, but it's very unlikely. Yeah, we're obviously having an Ailsa day here. One Ailsa on the 71 that day, and I stood there about an hour for it to come back. Because in them days, the 71 
went one way around the circle and the 70 went the other way. It went Atticliffe Road, Stanleyforth Road, Prince of Wales Road, then down through Norfolk Park and along Queen Road and then the other route was the other way around. Well, they came to Doncaster, didn't they? Because didn't they agree to one man here or something? Oh, yeah. So I think the last day also actually were here, weren't they? Rather than in Sheffield. When they were delivered, I don't think it mattered so much because there were more two-man routes, weren't there? But of course, as they disappeared. How the original build of uh, 62 vehicles that were delivered to Sheffield, two were delivered to A1 service, three of the Sheffield ones survived. 388, 383, and 377. None of them are running at the moment due to these vehicles having the uh, tendency to rot rather badly. So these were vehicles only designed for a 10 and 12 year lifespan. The longest running one was until 1997, which was 383, which ran for an independent operator in Scotland until it was a finally acquired preservation. But it really was in a perilous condition. And the vehicles now are 30 years old. A wife of somebody in our group, she's sadly no longer with us, used to call them whistling kettles, which I thought were quite appropriate, really, because they did. <laughs> There's no doubt about them. It's a bit like in the old days, when I don't, we got a batch of Regent 3s, and when they went through Pond Street, all the windows vibrated in Pond Street because the exhaust was so noisy. That's obviously taken from Norfolk Park. I mean, that, this is a fabulous spot for photography, for filming, because it, there's so many wide open spaces. I mean, it's superb now we've got the tram on there. And the bus interest has kind of gone downhill, in a way, because there's not many buses use that road now. The Austin Allegro, the late model of Austin Allegro there, W registration, Mark III. One of the early deliveries of the Dennis Dominators, that one was a diverted order from Blue Line of Armthorpe. Blue Line did not actually receive these vehicles. The company was taken over before they were delivered, so they delivered to the PTE in PTE livery. Yeah, I did take a lot of ales, didn't I? <laughs> they also 400 uh, ended up being sold to Eastern Scottish along with 25 of the, of, uh, the same batch. 1054, the pistol LH, doing what it does best, going around the housing estate. This were a dream when these arrived. As you can imagine, you know, we never had bristles in Sheffield. <laughs> this is Bradfield Road, which did become another bus route temporary when the trams were... Uh... I, never, I never actually travelled on one of those, but uh, compared to the later bed vans, which or the Dodge S56s which ran, and there, were, there seemingly was hundreds of them. Uh, I would imagine a bad on one of these would be rather more comfortable than the, uh, the later minibus variant, the van derived variant, because these were designed as a bus and built as a bus, whereas there was a van designed as a van and then built as a bus, which did lead to a huge mechanical problem. Good grief. We went round that corner, you won't get round there now because it's a dead end. Well, you could just get out actually. Alexander Vodid uh, Atlantean. These uh, had a very unusual sound, something which is repeated by nothing else in the country with the Voith automatic gearboxes. They seem to wail uncontrollably. This is on the Lancaster Road. That's 431, the Van Hull Bodied Atlantean. It doesn't look like an Ailsa without the, uh, the big black radiator grill. That vehicle ended its life in Doncaster at Dunscroft, but because it was a, somewhat of an oddball, it didn't live on for much more than uh, its uh, 10 years. The uh, Dennis Dominator in SYT livery. 2197, I think that was. Bridge Street bus station, which is no longer with us. Remember a bus actually running away there into the building at the bottom there? Just where he's turning right, well, he just ran you to that building, that brick building. And whether the brakes failed or what, I don't know. And Dennis Dominator in quickly applied SYT livery, which is, it's in PT livery, but with a red band at the bottom and the SYT sticker at the top to get all the vehicles roughly looking the same, but some of them were rather untidy. So it's turning out of the Bridge Street bus station. You know, it's talking about having mini interchanges around Sheffield. Well, we had that in them days. 
we've got Pond Street, we've got Camp Paul Lane and we've got Bridge Street. And trouble is when you got off here you got a, a, a steep climb to get into the shopping centre. And that will be uh, heading to the north of the city, the 98 to Greengate Lane. All the routes to Stocksbridge, High Green, Grenerside departed from this point, Shay Green of course, Parson Cross. I quite like these actually as well. DMS Fleet Line, the only operator outside London to have such a vehicle. Yeah, I like the, I like the DMs. Although they were built to London DMS specification, the interiors were SYPTE and there were detailed differences on the outside. For example, the indicators in London were fitted above the wing mirrors, whereas in Sheffield it was in a conventional place at the front near the headlights. And also the engine bustle on the Sheffield ones was exposed, whereas on the London ones it was, it was filled in. I think when they were delivered somewhere at Harry's Road, but they didn't last long because Harry's Road was never a Damal garage really. It was always Leyland Atlanteans. So they didn't last very long at Harry's Road. The early 80s saw many different operators' buses on the streets of Sheffield. Unique styling on the uh, Atlantean from Nottingham. Very distinctive bodywork. You can always tell they're old second-hand ones by the style of the front end in particular. That was a D registration, 1966-67. They just had this style in door specification. Yeah, they're a bit, they were a bit ugly really, you know, weren't they? they were, you wouldn't call them a neat bus. It will be either a Northern Counties body or an East Lanks body. A Northern Counties body on a uh, fleet line from Manchester. Greater Manchester buses, there's, you could tell them when they were second hand as well by the arrangement of the blind, really. That uh, style of body was later fitted to the uh, Dennis Dominator in Sheffield. A uh, robot Atlantean from Hull. Another Greater Manchester. Sneaking past another one, which is a uh, Start of the traffic queue, an Ailsa, the nearest to the camera. Two Alexander Atlanteans from Tarn and Weir. Note that uh, they what we would call Jumbo Atlanteans, they'll be 80 seaters. These are uh, built to the panoramic window design. It's crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> Is it Newcastle? No. There's a whole one in the background, the Tarn and Weir going round the roundabout. But just why were all these buses in Sheffield? The traffic commissioners, I think, always oh, just checks buses for their, you know, how safe they are. I think they turned up. I think East Bank was one of the worst, and they just they blacklisted just loads of these buses. They said they weren't safe to go on the road, so they had to panic. And, and this is the second time it had happened. Previous time it happened, we had borrowed things like Leyland PD tools from Edinburgh. We had buses from quite a few places, all rear loaders, a lot of more side loaders. We had some. Uh, Huddersfield side loaders. I think they were Leyland PD threes. I believe that was a Marshall by the Atlantean. A uh, yeah, Atlantean from Leicester. This will be a PDR model, and that is an ECW body. With such a shortage, the PTE grabbed whatever new buses it could. Now I think that National was acquired. That fleet of Nationals. I think they should have gone to, to National Bus Company, and they were just ordered because they're available. They had them. You know, it was a case of a bus is better than no bus at all. I mean, it was just, <laughs> it was just incredible. Just an amazing time. I mean, the Manchester vehicles looked very tidy. They appeared to be the best kept of the, uh, the hired in vehicles. I mean, at one point, I remember on the previous lot, the whole of the 75 was operated by Leyland PD2s from Edinburgh. I mean, just think about it. I mean, the fact that this happened twice, it really was disgusting, really, weren't it? Yeah, the, uh, the Manchester vehicles did also appear to be the most modern on hire. Standard wear vehicle is, uh, I think, is a W registration, so that's uh, pretty modern. Although, although, having said that about the, uh, the Manchester vehicles, the fleet lines were M registration, 1973-1974, so appearance is often deceptive. It's a part well bodied Atlantean Aster. One of those survives the duration. The Derby vehicle, interesting that. This is a fleet line, but uh, later on the PT were to have on loan a uh, Northern County body Ailsa trials. It was a Mark III Ailsa. Derby, they weren't seen very often because I think they had to pay per mile. Whatever mileage they did, they had to pay per mile, so they didn't get used very much. I mean, some of the buses actually got two fleet numbers on. They put new fleet numbers on and they got the ones for the other operator. 
Some of these hires liked it so much in South Yorkshire, they came back. Those GM vehicles, uh, a number of them came back to South Yorkshire in later years. Rex, rather than had a number of them, they operated on schools. And they all were that back, the, the M registration back. I've always liked the Manchester livery. I think it's really nice, that Manchester. Even when they are brown and, and orange, I think it looked really nice. And tiny wheels are nice. That were they were nice. They were nice buses actually. Those the town and weir vehicle there. Notice that there appears to be a window missing. That's because the staircase is on the uh, passenger side, whereas we're used to having the staircase on the driver's side. We used to go out in the evening and ride on all these. You know, it was incredible. You know, we used to we'd go to Bradfield on a VR. You know, for evening, have a drink, and then come back on the next one. <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing, actually. Oh, it were it were paradise. We used to be one of the from Leicester again. Put up behind Nailsa. Although the PTE had a sizeable number of hires from several other corporation fleets, the numbers of buses from some were tiny. You know, the Burnley and Pendle vehicle, East Lank body, these were very, very, uh, not very often seen and were not really much of a success as hired vehicles in Sheffield. They weren't around a lot because they were single leckers. Leicester City Transport again. Very similar to, if they, if they put a blue band on it instead of red, we can call it Sheffield, can't we? On the 71, Prince of Wales Road Circular, is the uh, part, uh, is the Atlantean from Leicester. Now the, uh, the Wicker Archers, which have still got the electrification. Mini Club Mini State there, the fleet line from Derby. Gareth Atherton explains more about the background to the hires. The hired vehicles in Sheffield were due to a vehicle shortage, uh, maintenance problems, uh, a number of influencing factors, which in order to keep service, uh, it was the only option was to draft in vehicles from other parts of the country. I know the hole in the road is not a hole anymore. The tram's going over it now, isn't it? Oh, it's not, it's not a hole anymore that's covered up. I remember them digging it out and putting it all back. <laughs> that shows how old you are, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, while these uh, vehicles were on hire, we were waiting for new vehicles, predominantly Dennis dominators, although the Metrobuses were also on order. But... I think they borrowed some Greater Manchester's afterwards again, because they were short. This Atlantean that's coming towards us now, when I'm passing the camera, was one of the batch of the final Leyland vehicles delivered to the PTE. They were to buy another two Olympians in 1983. That was that. <laughs> oh, it was magic. Well, they'd obviously got spare, aren't they? When you look at how old they were, they were older than a lot of stuff that we got. They'd probably, they were probably stood at the back waiting to be scrapped, some of these, but they were obviously legal, you know. The sign there on the lamppost, which is an old British railway sign, pointing to the Midlands Station. I think because they got done once, you know, with, when they had the real orders, they, they probably were a, a marked company at that time, you know. Oh, this is the RE. That was magic, that. It stayed for ages. And this winter was so cold. He said, will body, of course. I think when this was sent, well, I don't think it ever went back. I think it was just scrapped straight away, but to have an RE on City Clipper, you know, I mean, that is different. And this is when we had snow. I mean, it weren't like snow for an hour or two and then went. It was like here for three or four weeks, as you can tell with the thickness of it. These days it seems to snow and then turn to rain and all go away. And if you aren't out on that morning, you've had it. But it weren't like that on this winter. I think of the GMPTE livery, I think the earlier one with the orange and white was the preferred one for me personally. You could almost say you weren't, you weren't in Sheffield there, there was nothing in sight but Greater Manchester buses. Very snowbound day. The uh, Ailsa, which has just gone past, did not perform very well in the snow. Often they would end up going sideways down an incline. Although that vehicle has not uh, 
got its lights on, it's got a great light out. Perhaps it would be a good idea to put your lights on and hit like that. United Vistalari, National Bus Company days. Heading out of the bus station and heading down Pond Hill. Interesting to, to find out whether the drivers were just allowed to drive these regardless of whether they had to actually have special type training for them. We didn't have many Bristols, certainly not many Bristol REs, you only had the Bristol LHs and some Bristol VR double deckers. Portsmouth uh, Leyland National KCR 108P, the senior on hire, which it was then acquired by the PTE. Hasn't it just been preserved after something? I'm sure I've read something about that actually recently. Was it number 90? I've got 90 on my mind at the moment. That's, is that snow? It is, is it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, trick, yeah Christmas trees. It's not the best of times, is it, when the snow, sun's all patchy and reminiscent and messy. Heading up off Park Square, up uh, onto High Street. The, uh, the styling of body fitted to the Greek line and the Atlantean was identical. And you could, the only real way of telling, apart from possibly a badge on the front, was uh, to look at the engine cover. As we've seen, South Yorkshire PTE operated a fleet of articulated buses in the city of Sheffield. These were the first legally operated vehicles of their kind in the UK. Stuart Cook. Nicknamed in Sheffield Bendy Buses. And we had six Leylands and six Man, or M-A-N. At this point, of when I filmed this, there was just one of each left. And I think the others were all uh, Leyland Nationals by then. And this is a film showing the, basically the whole route, starting in Pond Street, going through the markets, down by the side of the moor to the moorfoot and then back round again. City Clipper operated around Sheffield and it was a free service. It was rather like the inner circle was in Doncaster, going around the city boundaries. It was certainly a free service to start with and then it became 2P. The estate car, which is pulled into Fitzalan Square, with what could possibly be described as a chair. I can't imagine, imagine getting away with that today, really. The uh, City Clipper operated around city centre and then later on it was taken off and it was used, these vehicles were used on the on Wyburn Road. The Leyland variant, eventually all these vehicles were put into store. This is going up Angel Street. Because of their similar styling, the popular myth was that these Leyland examples were actually converted nationals. Oh no, they weren't, they, they weren't nationals, they were Leyland Dab. No, they, they certainly weren't a, although they were built with Leyland National parts of Leylands, it, they certainly weren't a Leyland National with a trailer on the back. Yes, this vehicle, 2007, exists in preservation. I could write an entire video on the exploits of that vehicle in preservation and trying to rescue it. That's for another time. Town North Square. But just how did the PTE's love affair with the Bendy Bus start? Yeah, the PTE ran an experimental one, which was a, a DAB Sora articulated vehicle, left-hand drive vehicle, but these were the first to operate in this country. And nowadays, many towns and cities have got articulated vehicles, but Sheffield has none. To drive on it really, as the Sheffield was the original operator at the time. The question is, will they ever return? But did the travelling public like them? Oh, they were, well, they were a big novelty, weren't they? Everybody loved them. You know, and it, because Pond Street's so a bit isolated from the shopping centre, they were very popular, getting people uh, into the central part of Sheffield. It's rather strange to think most cities and towns in Britain today have got articulated buses, and Sheffield hasn't. It's probably the largest city in Britain that's not operating vending buses at the moment. 
think that's more fucked. You know, it's had the Sheffield Necklace or co-op that's no longer there. It's the Waitrose supermarket that's there now. In the interior of the, uh, the man vehicle, these vehicles were the first in the UK to have the European style of plastic seats. I imagine it would be very hard to sit on. Not particularly comfortable, I suppose, when you're using the vehicle on, a, on a, like a city hop service. You haven't been going to be on for a few minutes, so it doesn't really matter. This is just uh, leaving Moorfoot to go back uh, around the back of the Moor shopping centre. It's rather more larger than the, uh, the Leyland variety, the man ones were. Lovely livery as well. Oh, the man's were lovely. Very nice buses. And you couldn't mistake one for the other, you know, the liveries, as I say, because the, the roof profile is totally different, as is the, the front as well. City liner, that's what they were called, yeah. Top of Church Street. Remember one actually got it wrong then, you tried to reverse bike and it locked up on the Saturday afternoon and they had to dismantle the trailer. You just turned it wrong. Rather ironic that shot now that you've got articulated tram cars coming down there. <laughs> Little did we know. Despite their popularity, crewing problems meant that these bendies didn't stay around for long. Yeah, this, these vehicles were event, all eventually put into store, but eventually they would come back to Sheffield. A slightly later model, Leyland DAB vehicles, which were delivered in 1985, which were used on various services, including uh, one from Meadowall to City. I was right lucky as well, did you notice? Know, didn't have to stop. Mm -hmm. You went straight through. It's one of them shots that you think, yes, that was beautiful. So, could Sheffield's buses be bendy once again in the near future? First group of uh, possibly planning to bring the FTR into use in Sheffield and have uh, done many experiments with it, but uh, it seems to be a success in York, although has had a fair amount of bad press about it uh, recently, but it remains to be seen whether articulated vehicles return to Sheffield in the future. A growing number of vehicles operated by the PTE are preserved. Carrot Atherton looks at just a few. This one, Leyland Royal Tiger Cub, which ran its uh, latter days halfway garage, is now preserved at Central Transport Centre and is seen during the celebration of Doncaster 100. Similar vehicle but a little bit smaller is a Leyland Cub, down of Doncaster 33. Again at the Santor Transport Centre. This vehicle has a, a manual crash gearbox. The MCV G6 was the last half cab to operate in Doncaster for the PTE, although it's currently off the road. But, uh, hopefully will return to the road in the very near future. Felix Motors, uh, AEC Reliance, that ran from halfway in its latter days. And there's one of uh, three vehicles which are preserved, but the only one which is a runner. Blue Line Freight Line TT745S is now in preservation, but sadly the vehicle's in a pretty poor state and uh, needs a lot of work to bring it up to standard, so it currently resides in secure storage. Seen here at uh, IOS Coaches. It was in use up until 1999 on uh, school services. The Electroline Trolleybus, an experiment carried out in 1985 by the PTE to introduce trolleybus operations back into the town. Had an experimental trolleybus route set up at the Doncaster Racecourse, but sadly it didn't uh, prove anything more than an experiment. The Pondy regulation was axed. Due to the uh, spiralling costs. Uh, the Rotherham Crosley, which is one of very few preserved Rotherham motorbuses. 
another one which is uh, KT220, Daimler CVG6, which has now been completed and is uh, seen here at the Sheffield Box Museum in a fairly dismantled state. A number of years ago, when the restoration was uh, progressing, Sheffield Transport uh, AC Regent 5 874. Sheffield Transport Fleet Line 754, which incidentally was purchased direct from the PTE when it was only 12 years old. Part Rail Model Atlantean 1357, which uh, ran as a driver trainer for the PTE before being preserved. And so did 904 PD3. Now used by Thirst Group for uh, wedding hire and similar ventures. Also under their care now is uh, 1156. The only surviving part where I bodied Jumbo Atlantean 748 or 1148 as it was new to Sheffield Transport was used by Royal Council as an exhibition bus and the current owner has decided to keep it as an exhibition bus and be painted into a pseudo SYT derived livery. AC Swift 54, which is seen here at the Sheffield Bus Museum. That vehicle is now undergoing heavy mechanical work to bring it up to standard and it will shortly be receiving a repaint in Sheffield Transport Literary. The engine has been rebuilt. That's my jack under there. The Ailsas, seen here at Blackfinch about to leave and seen here in 1994 uh, of October of that year at the Sheffield Bus Museum just arriving and seen there some years later part way through its very very long restoration process no nut and bolt has been unturned with this restoration it's what the vehicle needed and what it deserves really Elsa 383 arriving at Meadowhall in 1997. It was driven up from Birmingham. Mechanically, it was very good, but the body, as you can see, is in a terrible, terrible state. It hit a bridge in uh, 1991 and uh, was just patched up and it ran like that until 1997. As you can see on the shots, uh, the condition of the vehicle is not good. 1515, the Anish Fleet Line now by default has become unique. It lives on uh, and is currently in the middle of a very, very long restoration. Mm -hmm. 1655, the Royal from Doncaster District. One of now perhaps half a dozen of Doncaster vehicles which survive into preservation. This vehicle uh, is seen here having undergone the, the partial restoration. The, uh, the vehicle is seen there being uh, test driven after having mechanical work undertaken. 1831, uh, seen here parked at the Barnsley District, their missus of Wakefield Road. Uh, although it's it's complete uh, and will run, it is in a bit of a poor state. These vehicles were not renowned for their structural longevity, really. One of these survives, which fit and it does, because it's uh, a very unique vehicle now. Uh, but it does need a lot of work, it needs another engine and uh, some structural work to the body and it uh, sits under now secure undercover storage awaiting its turn it does run but it is an absolute joke to try and drive it it really is ridiculous Alexander Atlantean uh, a restored example 1790s in here at the Meadowhall Valley in 2004 
As time progresses, more South Yorkshire PTE buses enter preservation, and a growing number are from the interesting years of the early 80s. <laughs>